Hi there, I'm Janelle Lawrence, the Urban Teacher, and welcome to my channel. In a previous video, I went over everything that you needed in a lesson plan. So I went over everything from le learning standards or content standards, literacy standards, to essential questions and focus questions, all the way down to how to run your lessons. However, um, my camera was overheating and I did not have time to go in depth in all the things I think is necessary for an effective lesson plan. So in the previous video, I went over, it was like an overview. Now I wanted to go into what I think of when I think of a lesson plan. Of course, everything, everything is important. You need those standards. You need those essential questions. You need to talk about what vocabulary you're going to be teaching. You need to have considerations for unique learners. But today, what I'm focusing on is mainly lesson structure or the flow of the day. So typically what you think of as the lesson plan, like what is happening first, second, third, that kind of stuff. If you need support or you need a lesson plan template, please click the link below. I have a, I have four free um, versions of my lesson plans. Those, like if you do um, general ed, you have, I have two examples of a lesson plan there or two templates. And then if you do ICT, I have two templates there. One for if you want to do parallel teaching, I find like a different lesson plan is better for a parallel teaching. And one if you want to do um, station teaching. Now, if you don't know what parallel teaching or station teaching is, or even what ICT is, um, please let me know in the comment section so I know to do a video on that as well. All right, so without further ado, let's get into it. So today I wanted to talk about the flow of the day or the lesson structure. That is very important because if you have a good flow of the day of a good lesson structure, chances are your lessons will go a lot better than if you didn't. So you have to know what comes first, second, third, fourth. And I would go about what I do, what is typical, what you should be doing as a new teacher. Of course, you can deviate from this. Um, you can make some alter alterations if it makes sense. And you can different lessons call for different things but this is the general setup of a lesson and then i will also periodically i will show you an example of something that i'm doing in my classroom actually coming up one of my first lessons all right so let's get started so every lesson should start with an entrance activity and an entrance activity is important because it sets the lesson up it sets the tone for the lesson um it helps, sometimes you can use it to activate prior knowledge or just to push curiosity through questioning and that kind of stuff that you do. Um, you can use it as a formative assessment if you do a, um, sorry, an entrance ticket or, or you can use it for, um, for discussion. So anything an uh, interest activity is very important let me get my notes closer an uh, interest activity is very important because it activates prior knowledge it encourages students it engages students immediately um one of the issues with behavior management that i see in a lot of my colleagues is sometimes they allow students to come in and um there's no real structure at the very beginning so that's where we lose our students so interest activities help to um, engage students immediately. As well, it provides a routine for students. In my classroom, students know that they have two minutes to come in, sit down, take out their supplies, and get that focus question and learning target down. They know they only have two minutes, so it gets them started right away. And from there, so that's basically my first entrance activity. But let's not count that. Let's call that transition. That's just to get them quiet. The real entrance activity is what comes next. It's there do now or they bell ring a question that's really good if you want to um you want to encourage critical thinking and build curiosity or you might do some kind of vocabulary activity or you might do a quick write again curiosity rigor that kind of stuff journaling you can you can even give an entrance ticket if you want to see how many how what students retain from yesterday's lesson or a previous lesson Mm, you can do poll survey. There's a number of things you can do for that entrance activity. In my, I'm going to show you what I am going to do in my very first social studies lesson um, of the school year. So take stay tuned. The next thing that you do after the entrance activity, you should go straight into your mini lesson. But let's backtrack. Let's backtrack a little. 
So I said I'd give two minutes for them to come and sit down, get that focus question and learn and target. But how long should your entrance activity be? I normally aim for five minutes. I normally aim for five minutes of students doing something and then maybe one minute for me to debrief really quickly. Um, I might, like I was doing a lot of sentence on scrambling last year where I, they might have a vocabulary word that they, they were introduced to the day before. And then I have a sentence. Geography is whatever, like a sentence that they have to unscramble and put together. And then I might have a little while for us to like do it together where I go over the answer. It's not really a minute, maybe like 30 seconds. So I'd give about five and a half minutes for my entrance ticket. You might have an entrance ticket that might require a little bit more. So I would say aim for 10 minutes. 10 minutes is the top. I wouldn't go past 10 minutes if you teach middle school. Before we go on, I should let you know I am a middle school social studies teacher. So my my advice is geared to middle school. I can also do secondary. Middle school to high school, but I'm a middle school teacher. So I want to go beyond 10 minutes. I have, sometimes you have to break the rules, right? I have gone to 15 minutes, but that's because I'm doing something more rigorous and I want them to do the inquiry before the lesson. But for you, for now, aim for five minutes. And if it has to stretch, do not pass 10 minutes. I am a teacher leader and I've gone into numerous teachers' classroom where I go in 20 minutes late because, you know, I'm a teacher and I'm doing other things. I go in 20 minutes late and they're still doing the entrance ticket. I'm like, what is going on? When are the students going to learn? If you're just going to be doing an entrance activity, like what is going on? So let's say 10 minutes. After the entrance activity, the next thing is to go straight into the mini lesson. The mini lesson is necessary. Please not skip the mini lesson. Um, I was part of my school's hiring committee and I met some really good potential teachers and then they came in for the demo and they had this wonderful entrance activity and then here, do the assignment. Ma'am, sir, you're supposed to teach. That is your job. How do you expect them to do this without actually teaching them what, to, what it is and how to do it? You need a mini lesson. For me, I focus my mini lesson. If you're a social studies teacher, listen up. I focus my mini lesson on what my um, content standard is or what is my content objective. So let me give you an example. All right. So I want to show you an example of a lesson plan that I have. And I have this one that's free. So it's a freebie. You can get it on from TPT. There's a link in my description box. Or you can get the whole mini unit that has all of it included. But let's not go on to that. So now let's look at the lesson plan. So the lesson plan that I'm talking about is this one. It's about geography and development. Make it a little bigger. So, so that you get some context. Even though I'm not speaking about all the components of a lesson plan, you need to get some context. So the standard that I'm looking at for social studies is present-day Eastern Hemisphere geography. The diverse geography of the Eastern Hemisphere has influenced human culture and settlement patterns in distinct ways. Human com communities in the Eastern Hemisphere has adapted to or modified their phys the physical environment. So that is my social studies standard. So what I teach is to my social studies standard. And I use that social studies standard to make my learning objectives. So what they should be learning in my mini lessons or what I will be teaching is students will accurately define development within the context of the Eastern Hemisphere. Hemisphere. That is my mini lesson. That's what I'm teaching. So when I say you need to have a mini lesson, I'm saying what you have to teach. All right. From there, as you can see, there's two learning objectives. The other one is students will practice citing textual evidence from information text when discussing development. So in that one, that's where I get into my guided practice. But before I tell them or I model how to do a worksheet or how to annotate a document, you need to teach the content. How does that look? So let's go to the slides. So this is the size associated with this lesson. How does geography influence the development of an area? And in this one, they're looking at Accra, Ghana. All right, so the area that they're looking at in lesson one of this, um, if you get the pack, there's five different areas from across the Eastern Hemisphere. So 
by the end of that class, they need to know what does development mean in the context of Accra Ghana. Again, that's what I'm teaching. I, students will be able to define development. I'm teaching them this definition. And I'm also teaching the other part, but I'm talking about the mini lesson at this point. So in this, I did say, I had mentioned earlier that my, my entrance activity is about five minutes. They have a minute to look at this and see um, what development mean. They have a minute for each of these images. And then they're doing their, um, they're doing a question or, ah, hmm, this is like an image analysis, come up with your own definition. It's like a combo of the list of I gave you. Write your own definition of development based on what you have seen in the image. Simple enough. But then I start teaching. And for this one particular lesson, it's the first lesson, the first social studies lesson of the school year. I'm teaching them the word development. If I'm going to be doing a unit on geography and development and the student does, don't really understand what development means, you're going to see it's going to be very difficult. So that's what my mini lesson is. And it's something so simple like that. Like you're a middle school or maybe even a high school teacher. We're not asking you to lecture to the students. They're not in college. They're not in grad school. Their attention span is not going to allow for you to to lecture to them. Something as simple as that, it can be the mini lesson, but it has to be there. If your admin walk into your classroom, you need to explain what did you teach? Well, I taught them the definition of development. Maybe your admin might add some more, but at least you're teaching and that's what I want them to do. And of course there will be more because the next thing, the next step is my guided practice. But let's pause for now. I'll go back to me speaking. And not a voiceover. Again, limited uh, mini lessons. You have your two nows. I aim for five. Maybe I'll go up to six minutes, no more than 10. Mini lessons. I can go up to 10 minutes if necessary, but it's not something I normally do. I try to do my mini lessons within five minutes. After my mini lesson, I go straight into the guided practice because I've only done one of my learning objectives as yet. I said I was going to teach them that, um, vocabulary and I did that but now the next thing to do is is my camera overheating the next thing to do is I want them to understand how to properly cite textual evidence and I'm going to model that for them okay so looking back at the lesson plan the second learning objective is students will practice citing specific textual evidence from information text when discussing development and you can see that in the learning target students know that they're going to have to site specific textual evidence. So it says, I will be able to define development, which we did, done, and identify specific examples of development in Accra, Ghana. So the students know that I will, so we did, I will be able to define development, and I already did that with the mini lesson, and now we're going into the guided practice. And so I will be able to identify specific examples of development in Accra, Ghana, citing textual evidence to support my findings. So I need to teach them how to do that too. So you can think the mini lesson to me is more about content, while the guided practice is more about the literacy standard. Of if you're an ELA teacher, then your mini lesson will be um, what is what does it mean to 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 cite textual evidence. What does it mean to how, why is it necessary? That kind of stuff, like conceptually what's going on. Whereas I'm a content teacher, so I don't want to teach ELA, but I need ELA in order for my students to be um, proficient. So let's look at the slide. So in this one, students are going to get this reading. If you get this free download, the article comes with it. It's only 244 words, so something that they can do within 15 to 20 minutes. So they're looking at this article called Rediscovering Home, A 20-Year Journey Back to Accra. And in it, they have to read and identify evidence of development within Accra, Ghana. And you're going you're gonna to identify that. So maybe you might want the students to annotate. That's one way you can do it. But my my standard is all about citing textual evidence. So that's where I'm going to be modeling how to do it. And I keep my modeling for under um, five minutes, five minutes the most. Like if it's just me, I think I can read this and 
um, model what I want within two and a half, three minutes. And then if I want to go on to another paragraph and do a we do together, that's another option. But the whole thing should take about five minutes. Again, attention spans are limited within adolescent students, as well as you want them to do the heavy lifting. You want them to struggle. You don't want to sit there doing the work for them. So, and I model it. This is what I expect. This is very important. A lot of time you have behavior issues because students don't know what you want, or they might think it one at word answer is okay, or they can just underline, and then what's going to happen for the rest of the time a lot for this. They're going to be making noise. They're going to be a distraction or a disruption. So in this case, I want them to say in the article, I want them to identify what they're reading. If there's a poem in the poem, in the article, that's what I'm teaching them. Sixth graders, your middle schoolers, now you need to be properly citing. I want you to put the name of the article. And then they can either quote, but I want to model not quoting or not taking direct quotes, but summarizing or paraphrasing what they saw. So Kwame notes the emergence of skyscrapers, sky, skyscrapers, new roads, and advanced technologies. That's the evidence of development within Accra, Ghana. Simple, straight to the point. Now back to reality. So, so far you should have five minutes into your lesson with the um, entrance activity, five minutes with the mini lesson uh, about, and then five minutes with the modeling. And then that way you can get into independent work time or group work time. That's the next thing. So if you have longer periods, I would say aim to do a group work and then an independent work or do independent work. Actually, let's think about it. So the next step is to go into the work. Um, students are allowed to speak to each other while they work. So I would call it collaborative work more than group work. It's not really independent. So that's my next thing. So that is where they're practicing what you just taught them. So I have like, they have to go through the whole reading and find evidence of um, development within Accra. And I think I set a parameter of how many I'm looking for. I'm not sure. I have to go back and look at the lesson plan. I don't have an, I don't see a number, but I do have a worksheet and the worksheet indicates how much I want them to find. So they go through that and they can work collaboratively. I wouldn't call it group work because it's not, they don't have roles or anything, but they can ask, they can ask each other for help and that kind of stuff. That's a collaborative work. Then every lesson should have some kind of independent work. Um, it could be the same activity if you want them to do that independently, or it can be in the exit ticket or the exit activity. A lot of exit, a lot of people, a lot of teachers do the exit activity as independent because you want to see what that student knows. So in this case, my exit activity is a quick write and a reflection on this. So exit activities can be anything because you're asking, you're doing that because you want to be reinforce learning. You want to collect data. You want to foster a set of closing. So sometimes the exit activity might just be you closing out the statement or you closing out the lesson. But I'll say reserve those for when they did an independent activity. So if they were collaborating the whole time, maybe you want, you might want to give them an independent activity to see what they know so you can report back you put it in your data, you can report it back to their parents. You might just want to close it and then tomorrow you're going to bring it, you're going to, you can close it so that they indicate that tomorrow we're carrying on with this. Anyways, um, my camera has overheated or is overheating once again. So I'm going to close this out here. Hopefully this was informative enough. If not, if you need more, um, I would say download the, um, the lesson plan template. It is free. All I ask is like an email address. And then I you can also download the lesson plan in which that I, I previewed in this video so that you can see how I do it, how I call everything, like my timing. You can also see how the lesson looks because I actually have the slides there, I have the worksheets and that kind of stuff. Now, if you're a social studies teacher and you teach this and you like it or you see the lesson plan, you like it, I'm inviting you to buy the full lesson pack. There are five lessons in all. Everything that you need to teach, no prep or little prep because you do have to put in your own differentiations. But 
yeah so um thank you for watching this video hopefully it was helpful um before i go i just want to make sure you understand that you need an entrance activity you need to teach within your mini lesson you should be modeling or guiding them with the guided practice and then you can do a collaborative or independent work and then a close and again your close and your independent work can be the same activity but that's the basic of how every lesson should look thank you for watching this video if you haven't done so as yet, please subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you don't miss any more videos. I think the next video or uh, a video coming up will be me sitting down and actually completing a lesson plan with you guys. So thank you for watching and have a great day.